I love OLED monitors so much, it's scary. I even frighten myself sometimes. And what's not to love? They have better contrast, better colors often, they're much faster, and the viewing angles blow LCD out of the water. But current monitors have one big problem, and that's brightness. Now, for SDR, I think they're fine for the most part, but where they really fall off a cliff is in their HDR performance. I mean, take a look at this chart here measuring the 10% and 100% window sizes of various displays. Sure, in the 100% window, most QD OLED and W OLED monitors put out a similar roughly 260 to 280 nits to their larger TV counterparts, but in a 10% window, they look like a joke delivering just at times around one third the brightness of OLED TVs like the LG G4. That G4 is coming in with nearly 1600 nits of brightness, whereas yes, the QD OLED monitors, at least in the HDR400 true black mode, can't even hit 500. That is an enormous difference and something that makes them look, well, rather anemic in terms of their HDR performance when compared to their TVs. And even in games, this trend continues where once again, OLED TVs can get up to more than three and a half times brighter than their goofy ah monitor counterparts on HDR highlights like in this scene in Baldur's Gate 3. And that's just an absolutely insane margin. But you might be asking, all right, fella, great, but why do I care? Well, you should care because even though OLEDs have potentially infinite contrast when showing true black thanks to their per pixel local dimming capabilities, in brighter scenes, especially where true black isn't present, OLEDs can actually have worse contrast than LCD based mini LED displays. Now, of course, OLED will always have that micro contrast that mini LED just can't compete with, but in terms of measurements, Yes, this can happen. OLED can actually look not as contrasty at times. This is because if the darkest point on the screen is, for example, one nit, well then in OLED putting out just 400 nits peak brightness only in theory has a visible contrast ratio in that particular scene of 400 to one. Whereas a mini LED giving you a peak brightness of say 4,000 would actually be giving you a 4,000 to one contrast ratio in that particular scene or 10 times greater contrast in that image. And contrast is one of the most important aspects of a good looking image. It glues your eyeballs to the screen by force and is also a more accurate representation of our world, which has enormous contrast potential, not just at night, but also on sunny days as well. The likes of which screens today are simply incapable of emulating. In fact, to give you a visual representation of just how far behind, OLED monitors are for HDR. Here's a chart showing the average QD OLED versus a mini LED TV, the ideal OLED, and an ideal monitor right now. As you can see here, the typical QD OLED is way, way at the bottom, at least in its HDR4 in a true black mode, and the Hisense 98 UX is absolutely smoking it. Now, that's to be expected. It's a mini LED TV. It's gonna get much brighter, but that is actually getting close to what I would consider to be the ideal OLED monitor, at least right now. And the ideal OLED monitor would, in my opinion, have a 1000 nit capability in a 100% window and get up to 4000 nits in a 2% window. Now that might sound kind of insane, but actually OLED TVs are rumored to be getting close to 4000 nits in the near future if what I've heard about potential next generation LG OLED TVs turns out to be true. So sure, maybe that will only be TVs and not monitors, and it'll probably be a while until we get a monitor with that sort of capabilities, but it could be possible in an ideal OLED push to the absolute max in the near future. But that actually doesn't even come close to the ideal display overall. The ideal display for HDR content, in my opinion, would have a full screen brightness close to 4,000 nits in a peak 2% window of 10,000 nits. Now that might sound insane, but actually small highlights that are very, very bright, at least for me, don't cause eye fatigue and Actually, the outside world I've measured in excess of 30,000 nits on something like a cement driveway 
just reflecting the sun. So clearly our world can get much, much brighter. And we don't necessarily need to exactly emulate that as there is a limit of what our eyes can even perceive in full detail. If you walk outside and you've been inside all day, that's gonna be a little bit blinding to suddenly be flashed with 30,000 nits. That's why I'm thinking around 10,000 nits would probably be a good cutoff, at least right now. And that would mean our current monitors would need to get around 22 times brighter in smaller windows and around 16 times brighter in a 100% window. Now in the near future, that's pretty unrealistic, but what I could expect to see out of a future monitor would be something like this. You could get a, say, 100% window that's around 330 nits, up from the 260 to 280 that we have now, and a 2% window that reaches closer to 1400 nits, and roughly two times brighter highlights in some of those smaller window sizes overall. That might sound kind of extreme to get small window sizes up to two times brighter, but actually I don't think that's much of an ask at all as current OLED TVs do actually perform around that or better right now. So to get that out of monitors, well, they're using the same tech in monitors, they're just smaller, so heat's more of a consideration. I think it could be done, especially if we get advancements over the next one to three years. But that's just my thought process on it. I want you guys to let me know in the comments, how bright do you think OLED monitors should get? Should they get to maybe 1500, 2000, 4000, 10,000 nits in a small window size to give you that enormous contrast, even in brighter scenes? Or do you feel like current HDR capabilities, even though they can't necessarily show you good contrast in bright scenes are good enough for you. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and also be sure to get subscribed for everything else display related here on the Display Guy. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin flexible and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.